So I have made a piece for three couples called Tangents. Um, it's a piece about relationships and how um, relationships have different paths and are quite different from each other. But at the same time, there are um, situations and, and moments um, in that relationship that is actually very similar in different relationships. And obviously I'm approaching that in a sort of more abstract way. I'm using Musorgis music, which is a really beautiful piece called uh, Pictures at an Exhibition. He composed that when he went to see an exhibition and he got inspired by the different paintings that were in that ex exhibition. So therefore the music's a little bit challenging because every movement is very different from the other. So the challenge was to actually use those movements in a way that would um, work well um, with the choreography. Um, but yeah, it was really nice, it was a great process and the dancers really, really helped as well. So it was very gratifying. Well, initially it was um, Karen's idea as I made this piece uh, as a sort of draft uh, at the Royal Ballet Draft Works. It wasn't in a finished finish state. She decided to take it into the company's repertoire. Well, the music, it's the first violin concerto of Philip Blass, which is uh, my favorite contemporary classical composer. Uh, I've been listening to this concerto for many years now, and uh, I've always, it's always been close to my heart. Um, in the Royal Ballet uh, draft words, um, I just used the first movement because I, I had limited time to make and choreograph uh, because I was doing it during my free time. And, um, and because we were choreographing it on a, where the audience was all around the stage, I started choreographing it so that every member of the audience, no matter where they were sitting, were getting a sort of choreographic aesthetically sort of pleasing thing to see uh, so while I was doing that I noticed that the, I, I just ac accidentally was making this sort of rotational movements because I had to sort of please everybody around that it just it was mimicking the movements of the planets and that's where orbital motion came from it came it, I accidentally was mimicking the orbital motion of the solar system My ballet is not abstract and it's not obviously storytelling but it has a, a definite point of departure where I took the story from, the characters from. Um, when I first chose the music I kept listening to it and there was a, I could hear there was potential for, for a story to be told through that music. Um, so I looked through lots of different stories and I found the story um, by the Portuguese author, uh, the book's called The Mayas, and it's, uh, it tells a, a story of a Portuguese family, and brother and sister get split up when they're very young, and they don't know they, you know, the other one exists, um, and they meet up when they're adults, they fall in love, they can't um, avoid a, a certain connection that they have, and it drawn to each other and they keep going back to each other and eventually they find out um, their brother and sisters and, and it, get, it gets very you know very ugly and but I think obviously the, the book's very long and my piece is only six minutes long so I concentrated on the, the personality of those two characters and, and the journey that they go through and I tried to get all of that across in that very short space of time. So as you know, I'm a dancer with the Royal Ballet Company and that in itself takes up a lot of, of my time. And when I do practice choreography, and it's something that I really feel needs to be practiced a lot, I grab people from the company in my spare time, but that's, that's it. There's no real oppor more opportunity than that created at the Royal Ballet. There's no time for it. So it's really important to try and get my hands on top quality dancers 
to use and try and develop my movement and develop my ideas outside of the Royal Opera House with the extra time, you know, I can find time in, in breaks, in kind of my holidays and things. So New English Ballet Theatre creates that opportunity for me. They have, you know, an amazing group of dancers all really open and willing to try new stuff. And I don't know, I feel it, it's a really nice environment for me to work in and I, um, I feel quite relaxed here and there's no clock ticking like there is usually, you know, I'm always in a rush to make something, it's nice to have the time to spend with the dancers, to change things, to look at things I don't like, to maybe throw away stuff that I've spent a whole day creating but because I know I've got time and they've given me time, it's nice um, to develop it, so I'm having a great time. I founded New English Ballet Theatre because there were so many people out of work. It was in the heart of the recession and we really felt that, there were, that the whole uh, 20 to 30 year old age group in the creative uh, ballet, neoclassical ballet, arts, uh, design, music, young musicians, uh, that they needed more stage time and more opportunity. Uh, at, all the big companies were working flat out to hire as many people as they could, but it's still, there isn't enough stage time for the amount of talent that's out there. This piece was inspired by um, Tolstoy's Kreutzer Sonata, so really everything was started from that point. And um, one of the first collaborations was with Garth Barsley, who was the librettist. And um, we spent a lot of time with myself and Karen going through how we could fit this story into this amazing music. It's our life's blood. It was our, the reason that we started in the first place. And we have found that there's an ever uh, increasing number of choreographers who want to work with our company of uh, soloists in the neoclassical style. They have a very large range of style. It really is an examination of the whole of lyrical ballet technique and language. In addition, we've got uh, the collaboration with the music and with the artists, uh, obviously, uh, which starts at a, in many cases in most ballet companies quite early on, but for us it's particularly important because the whole each new work evolves mm. as a process of collaboration. For example, your piece, uh, we actually started with the uh, Tolstoy novella uh, and very early on brought in uh, the librettist, who also is a musician. And we had the, mm. uh, the, the musicians were also collaborating on where we could rearrange the music, where we could lengthen it to accommodate the, the storyline. Uh, and even at that point, we also brought in the designer, uh, Emma Bailey, who is the uh, Lindbury Prize for Stage Design winner. Uh, and she started straight away uh, designing the ballet around the, the story as it evolved. So we, it was a really even collaboration from very early on. Uh, and I think it, that's what made it such a successful work. Originally, Tolstoy's novella was inspired by Beethoven's Kreutzer Sonata, hence the title of the piece, and subsequently Janacek wrote a version in response to the novella. So both Karen and myself were really excited to see how we would be able to bring all of these elements together, both the music from Beethoven, both the music from Janacek, and the story, and, and create something new and original through the language of ballet.